All right, I'm going to keep it real with you guys and say that this was supposed to be an enforcer draft, but I've come to the conclusion, simply not possible. I started that draft, I found one player at 78 overall, and I got to 76 overall and couldn't find anyone else, so I, I just gave up. Pretty much. So instead, we're going to be doing what I, I came across so many of these players while trying to find the Enforcer. I was actually surprised. There was more than I thought there was going to be, but it's the Grinder. So we're going with player type of Grinder for the forwards. Defense can be anything. Goalie can be anything. So essentially, I'm probably going to take our defense and our goalies first and then deal with the offense later. So let's randomize the team here, shall we? And I'll go ahead and look at you guys, uh, or I'll immediately break icon. Contact, never mind. Back we go. Back focusing, and I am going to stop. It's gonna be the Boston Bruins. Not gonna lie, one of the more fitting teams for this type of draft. Let's keep the salary cap on. And here we go. Pick 12. Ooh, we got seven. All right. I tried to guess real quick and obviously didn't go so well. But anyway, I do want to find out who the best grinder is. I feel like it's got to be Tom Wilson, to be honest. Also, I'm using another custom roster here that just has a bunch of player updates, and he is a power forward. Are you kidding me? Is, did, did the game do that, or is this the custom roster? Zach Sanford is the first grinder I come across at 83 overall. Wow. So we're going to be stinky. It's just a matter of how stinky will we be. The good news is Vasilevsky is still here. So I am going to make him our starting goaltender. That's right. Believe it or not, he is not going to be our backup. And I can take any defenseman I want. And so far, I'm thinking of taking John Carlson. Petrangelo is right there as well, though. It's the 800k Petrangelo. I'm sorry. Next up will be Shea Theodore. Latang is a righty. Let's go. Taking him next. Just because we're going to have the cap for it, I guarantee it. I'm taking Jared Spurgeon. Ryan McDonough is going to be our next selection. Going defense first here. And our final defenseman will be Ekholm. So we are stacked on defense and in net. I'm probably going to take a backup goalie and then I'll finally start drafting the grinders. Yeah, let's make Cam Talbot our backup. Why not? What overall was Sanford again? 83, I believe. Yep, there he is. Good old Zachary. Welcome to the team. He has 89 discipline too. That's really good for a grinder. Oh, Felino, we get another 83 overall. That's solid. Garnett Hathaway, 1.5 million, 82 overall. We might be better than I thought, or we'll still suck, probably. But I want to get my hopes up anyway. Realistically, this is going to be another one of those experiments where it's sort of looking at how hard can... Really? Lucic isn't even? But we get Barkley, Goudreau. How hard can defense carry a team. I also realized I can make this much easier on myself by filtering for forwards. Don't know why I didn't think of that before. I'm slightly nervous about the cap space though because we already have 19 million left and we have not taken a lot of players or a lot of forwards I should say. There we go Corey Perry. Welcome to the team. Next up will be Zach McEwen at a whopping 78 overall but at least you know our cap hasn't been taking a beating the last two picks so that feels good. I was literally just about to say, apparently grinders don't like taking face-offs because we have not found a single centerman yet, but Cedric comes along to change that. 78 overall, our first line center. You love to see it. Is Lewis gonna be? Okay, nope, not what I expected. But anyway, let's go, Paquette. Andy Andreoff. He is a center slash left winger. 77 face-offs as well, so that is gonna be Another center for the squad. This draft has flown by. We only need four more players and we are all good to go. And Brandon Lemieux, right at the top there. 78 overall, 1.5, but at this point, I'm no longer worried about the cap. Let's go. I almost want to keep injuries on for this one just because I think it'd be funny, but then we'd have to worry about our roster. And I don't really want to do that. Ryan Reeves, 78 overall. Welcome to the bullying team. I don't even know what to call it. The Boston Bullies, essentially. I guess that'd be more fitting for enforcers, but that genuinely cannot happen. So I'm sorry. I wanted to do it. I really did. Good old Cal Buttercup. He is a grinder. 75 discipline, not too bad. He is decent at 78 overall. 3.5 million. So thankfully, we've been getting a lot of not cap-heavy players recently. But yeah, we're definitely gonna be within the cap. There seems to be a lot of 78 overall grinders, and I just found two in a row, and it's, who should I take? And it's probably gonna be Kyra, just because he's a centerman. I think I'm gonna come back for Kyle Clifford, though, just to have him, because he might plug in better than some of the other players, so I'm gonna go ahead and select him as well. I'm breaking my own rule. I'm going 21 rounds this time. I'm also gonna take Delorier, another grinder. Why not? Doesn't hurt. 
Camp is... Okay, yeah, I just wanted to double check, but I'm gonna take Delorier and then I'm coming back still for... I completely forget who it was. Clifford! The big red dog. There he is. Let's go, Kyle. He is going to be our final selection. I'm actually very curious to see what this team looks like on paper. Did we take any other players? No, they took some young players. So we don't have to worry about them being plugged in to the starting lineup. Oh, yeah? We get 2020 up in here. That is... I did not see that coming whatsoever. But I am here for it. Goudreau, Kyra, and Delorier get a plus two. Paquette, Hathaway, and Sanford get a plus two. Let me just make sure everybody is in fact a grinder. Yes, they are. Clifford did get put on the team, so that's good that I grabbed him. Defensively, we are insane. It's actually outrageous. Wow. 3-5-5. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna... I just wanted to see what would happen, but yeah, I'm leaving it at 3-5-5. Carlson Theodore, Letang, McDonough, Ekholm, Spurgeon. And then in net... We have Vaz- You know what? We're gonna make the playoffs. I don't care. I'm calling it right now. I'm gonna say Carlson gets the most points with 70? I feel like- Well, I mean, yeah. I believe it could happen. And then I'll guess we get 44 wins, but still make the playoffs. That's my assumption. Let's see what happens here, though. There you go. We're 1-0. Cancel the season. 2-0? Holy crap. Th we're actually insane. It's dumb. Love the streakiness of this game. Four-game win streak to start the year, and then a four-game losing streak to bring us right back down to earth. But we're still doing all right. Our arena is just going to be full of people who think they're hilarious that have that old sort of D and then like a picket fence sign. Ooh, the Jets fired their coach. I'm so sorry, Jonathan. Our team isn't really the youngest team in the world either. So maybe that will help us with poise and we'll have a good second half of the year or we'll have a post trade deadline collapse either or. I don't think there's anything I can even really do at the trade deadline unless we improve one of our defensemen, which I don't really want to do. The Capitals... Fired their head coach now. I'm pretty sure I took all the best grinders in the game, so we can't really do anything at the trade deadline. But I'll go in anyway. We'll just be a conservative buyer, I suppose. Enter the deadline. Unless there's some crazy defenseman on the block here, then there isn't really anything I'm going to be doing. No. Absolutely. Why are these guys on the block? Can you smarten up? Like, why are we putting Latang, McDonough, and Spurgeon all on the block? I get it. Our defense is stacked, but... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Block Maker Guy. Have you seen our offense? Why do you think we have them? This game's so broken. All I did was select Jake Ottinger. And it retained 1.9 million of his 900k salary. And it says that we're going to be at 96 million dollars. So, yeah, that's a little bit over the cap. But then if you just do this, it goes away. I don't understand. I'm not going to do anything anyway, though. I'll just stay as we are... Get me out of here. Hopefully we can make the playoffs. We're not looking super promising right now. I feel like it's going to be close, but it, ah, it's, it's, I don't know. Bergeron and Ferraro went to Buffalo in exchange for a first. And Raja Niemi, any other big trades you'd like to announce? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Suzuki and a first headed to Texas in exchange for a fifth. William Butcher, Nate Schmidt, and Tomas Hurdle. Oh, wow. I haven't seen three in a minute. Barry, a fourth and a sixth, headed to Carolina for a first. We currently have 32 wins, and we are fourth in the division. It's gonna be close. Never mind, we lose four straight after the trade, five straight after the trade deadline, six. Shall we keep it going? Why is this game so streaky? Like, we went on a massive losing streak, and then we just went and won a bunch of games. So I think my prediction was 40... No! We were so close! We were so close. I'm pretty sure at this game, we were in. We definitely were. We definitely were. That is so upsetting. The Ottawa Senators just barely beat us out. If you guys could have won one of those first, what, 30 games after the trade deadline, then maybe, just maybe, we would have made it in. But no. Instead, you guys suck. And you lost. Mini is going to take home the President's Trophy. Let's see what their roster consisted of. They got Marty with Matthews and, ooh, okay. That is a good first line. Then they got Lafreniere, Johnson, and Arvidsson. Gagne, Benino, and... Okay, whoa. I don't think this team is really President's Trophy winning material. But anyway, I guess we'll see if it was the top 16 teams that made the playoffs. The game seems to be, like, glitching hard right now. I don't know why I said glitching, because that's not really the word I'm looking for. It was more so lagging. But anyway, St. Louis, 15th, didn't qualify. Sucks to suck. And here we are. We were that... Dang close. John Carlson did lead for points. He had 63. Latang had 60. We got 51 from Garnett. Atta boy. Sanford put up 47. Goudreau, 46. I'll scroll to the bottom here. 
Who had the least amount? I'm curious. Lemieux with 16. Not very good. How about our goaltenders? How'd they do? A 913 from both of them. 258 from Talbot, 273 from Vasilevsky. Talbot went 12-7-0 with a shutout. And Vazzy went 30-31-3. Holy, that's surprising. I mean, I guess there's a much smaller sample size for Talbot. But anyway, Bennington, the nervous guy, got 45 wins at a 918 246 and a 923 from Merz Leakins, whose team won the President's Trophy. He got 40 wins on the year. Hughes led all defensemen with 68 points. We had Carlson up there with 63 and Latang up there as well with 60. So yeah, our defense went off, but we weren't able to get the most points out of a defender. Quinn Hughes on the Philadelphia Flyers will take that home. Matthews led the league with 52-52 and 104 points. Stamkos had 97, so Matthews was the only player to break 100. Mangiapane put up 92. What a mad lad. Cooch put up 91. Marchie and Crosby with 87. That's poetic that Crosby puts up 87. Well, anyway, let's sim the grinderless playoffs and find out who goes on to win the Stanley Cup. Oh, it's going to be the... Wow, they did it both. They did it both? What am I saying? Why? I, okay, apparently, guys, newsflash, still can't speak English. I mean, at least I catch myself and sort of instantly be like, what are you saying? But still, it should not be, it should not be leaving my oral orifice to begin with. Well, Minnesota cleaned up for the team awards, as you can see there. And the Tampa Bay Lightning made it to the finals but they lost. Matthews gets the Art Ross and the Hart. Morrissey gets the Norris. Cooch with the Lady Bing. Zegris, you love to see that. Merzlikens cleaning up the goaltender awards there. And yeah, wow, what a season for Matthews. Here is the playoff tree. Did the Wild go to seven? Yes, they did against the Colorado Avalanche in round number two. But other than that, it was a relatively easy walk for them. And actually, there was only one sweep in the entire playoffs. And it was round one, the Buffalo Sabres swept the Ottawa Senators. Well, guys, I tried. I mean, getting the goaltenders and defense first was the only possible way we could have been decent. So obviously that's why I went that route. Otherwise, it just would have been a complete disaster. So we were so close. It came literally down to the last game of the season. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching my videos and stuff like that. And I will see you soon.